Welcome to The Far Away and Nearby, a show about two nerds and an intellectual comparing notes on life and sharing laughs along the way. Here are your hosts, DJ, Heidi, and Sue. Hello there, and welcome to The Far Away and Nearby. I am your host, DJ Star Sage, and with me are our co-hosts, Heidi. Hi. And Sue. Hi. We hope you've enjoyed listening to our show this is our second episode, and we're going to start right in. Um, last time, it was up for Sue up first, so this time we're going to start with Heidi, and we're going to talk about our weeks. So, Heidi, um, what are the, high, the highlights and lowlights of your week? Uh, I wish my highlights and lowlights were as good as my hair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this... This week has been fascinating. It has been so up and so down. Um, I work, we're, we're going to go ahead and call it the Death Star. I, I work on the Death Star in a very teeny tiny department that is hideously <laughs> integral to how everything works. Mm-hmm. It's kind of uh-huh. like sanitation, only not as nice. Oh. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> we had the weirdest week. We had three days this week that were just really slow and we had nothing coming in and we were just dying for things to do. And then the last two days were the exact opposite on days where my tiny, tiny department all had tons and tons of meetings. So I left the Death Star on Friday with a ton of work still left to do. And then another really heavy day coming on Monday. So I am, I am dreading, dreading going back to work tomorrow. Oh. So that's that's my low light. Uh, my highlight is, is one of those things that's both awkward and hilarious. Um, I, I have that aforementioned Sprout. And uh, he got caught playing doctor with one of his friends. And oh, no. that oh. led to... <laughs> <laughs> that that led to the awkward, awkward, awkward talk because y- you got to put it out there and got to yeah. deal with it. And, uh, <laughs> it's one of those situations where my my zucchini is hilariously uncomfortable, and uh, yeah, my my zucchini <laughs> works in in a medical field, and so it kind of became a very cut and dry medical conversation <laughs> that um, was just utterly hilarious like utterly hilarious it was so good so that that was my highlight it was terribly awkward but so funny how did the other mom respond react um not too bad it it turned into a the adults all went off to the corner and discuss how to deal with this Um, (laughs) because of course that's one of those conversations that you're just never really ready to have yeah the birds in this talk is just there's, there's so much awkward surrounding it. And mm-hmm. so all the adults went off to the corner to discuss how we're going to discuss this and then decided mm-hmm. that the easiest way to do it was just to sit everybody down and talk about it. And so that's what happened. I and mean, it was it was very open and very honest and very scaled down for, you know, small ears. But it was, I don't know, I get a kick out of watching adults squirm in the face of, you know, <laughs> small children and horrible information. <laughs> I am super lucky in that my my mom is a super hippie. Like, oh. died in the wool, <laughs> bell bottoms, hair bells, the whole thing. So I I grew up in a very sex positive household where it yeah, didn't okay. become it didn't become a thing that was shameful or a thing that was bad. And it was always a, these things are okay to discuss. And that's actually a good portion of what the adults did because my zucchini and then the little girl's mom um, neither of them have that particular mindset. They don't come from the mm-hmm. same place that I do with it, which is, of course, why yeah. I, I get such a giggle <laughs> out of it, because to me, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's just biology. Yeah. This is normal. This is not, <laughs> this is not odd. And so it was, how do you have the conversation about appropriateness and what is appropriate play while still not turning it into something that is shameful so that they don't walk away from that particular experience feeling shame because you don't, you don't want that. Well, yeah. Right. A, a sex positive outlook allows for things like active consent where you can look yeah. at somebody and be comfortable saying, do you want this? Is yeah. this okay? 
and so it, it was just three women standing together desperately <laughs> trying to figure out how to how to talk to small children and it was I, I got a tickle. So yeah, it, it definitely became my my highlight of the week. It was it was so that, fun. That that's great. I just I can't imagine what it would have been like in my dad's household growing up because he had an aunt who was a nun. And, oh wow. <laughs> and um now, <laughs> The, the funny thing about this, me growing up in the super hippie, sex positive, very comfortable, mm-hmm. everything is open household, mm-hmm. my uncle is a Catholic priest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not long ago, we decided that since we had mom and dad's love letters, that it might be a comforting thing just to read the beginnings of, uh, you know, how we came to be. And mm-hmm. it was just so cute because my, my father had a learning disability. He, he was one of the poor folks that um, grew up at the tail end of the Depression, and I think he had scarlet fever. I have a feeling that my grandmother uh, helped my dad write some of his love letters because <laughs> because they're very Aww. cute and proper. <laughs> and at some points, my dad finally got around to talking about things, and he's like... Um, you know, my mom was in nursing school at the time when they were dating, and and uh, he was saying to her that he has the car that night and that they can go to the movies because it was so nice that other night when they went. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, so how did your week go? Well, um, I would say that probably the highlight of my week was it getting over um, <laughs> <laughs> you know um, it's quite a, a thing to have to get through a full five day work week when you're used to having holidays so many together <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's just oh my god I have to walk, work more than four days this week oh. <laughs> and we're we're doing some um preparations my my company and uh, i'll just refer to my job as the candy shop um because <laughs> you know it can be sweet and it can rot your teeth um <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> the uh at the candy shop we're um we're about to buy up some territory for uh from well, what would normally be a competitor but yeah. but we throw business each other's ways so mm-hmm. we're we're buying up uh, some territory and basically it's going to double our customer base. Ooh. And so the company is doing all sorts of hiring and preparation for this <laughs> this transition and mm-hmm. um you know there've been people in my office that have been there so many years that um you know they remember the good old days and well now we're in a new chapter with our location where we're not hiring anymore. In fact, they've decided we can hire people at less at this other location we have in another state. So, yeah, we told you we we're hiring for this upcoming acquisition, <laughs> but it's not going to be in your office. <laughs> so work for you was kind of your highlight and your low light. That's terrible, DJ. You know that, don't you? <laughs> well, these are the sorts of things that happen when you don't have a much of a social life. Well, yes, that's true. My highlight would have been that once a month on a Thursday night, my daughter and I and a couple of other people, that a couple of other women that we know, go out for... Um, we go to Applebee's and eat, and eat wings for 59 cents a piece or something uh, <laughs> and drink cheap, cheap drinks. Um, and I don't get to see her very much because she's working 50 to 60 hours a week um, because they won't hire anybody. Their company is in the process of maybe being sold and maybe acquiring something they aren't really sure Uh and if i were to mention who owns the company you might understand but i won't do that well as i understand (laughs) it in general terms you've mentioned that she works in a comp for a company that works in freight uh no she uh, works in a company that works in on computers she works in a call center oh okay and and she um 
I thought there was because, something about traffic controlling. Uh, yeah, there is. Okay. She, she, um, her particular job, she works nights. So, but her particular job is to make sure that the trains don't derail. It is fairly interesting. It is for her. Uh, it is fairly boring. And it uh, can be highly stressful sometimes. So, you know, it's all those things. But but I don't get to see her very often because she's working so so much. So that was re- it was really good that she was able to make that. She isn't always. One of the ladies is uh, was married to my, my cousin. And the other woman is a woman that she met in church who was a lot of fun. But she's older than I am, and, and I think that's pretty strange that my daughter chooses to hang around old ladies. <laughs> Was there a low yes. point in your week? Not really, because I I don't work. and. Did you stub your toe at all any time? I didn't stub my toe. <laughs> well, no, I didn't. I didn't. I did go to see my orthopedic surgeon, uh-huh. and he thinks that I need to replace my right shoulder joint. Oh. Oh. Or my left shoulder joint. Uh-huh. Well, I've had both knees and my right shoulder done, and I wouldn't have. I wouldn't. I, it's it's the most wonderful thing in the world. So I, I'm not too upset about that. It should. It should. As soon as they do it, it should make the pain that radiates down my arm go away. Oh. <laughs> So I mean, it's kind of weird when you go to reach for something and your arm stops, you know, partially there, mm-hmm. and this gigantic pain goes throbbing through your through your upper part of your arm and down into the into your wrist area, and it's just like, oh God, don't do that. <laughs> but it's it, it it will when they fix it when they replace it, they will. Uh, Th- that'll all go away. <laughs> you just want to flirt with the airport security. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's all plastic. I don't think there's any metal in my body. <laughs> so I don't know how that shows up. Well, they have those cameras now that when you step through the machine, it's basically like you're nude. Yeah, I, I heard that. And <laughs> I don't really care. I'm sorry if they want to look at me without any clothes on. Right. I'm not that pretty. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's got to kill your sex life. If you work for airport security, <laughs> seeing people all day like that's like, come on, put some clothes on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, when Doug, baggy uh, jeans and a t-shirt suddenly become the most seductive outfit ever. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, I it, that's probably as embarrassing for them as it is for the people who stand in front. And I don't think that would bother me a whole lot. It's just like, okay. Well, can you imagine having to rifle through suitcases for things that require batteries? <laughs> well, oh, and, man. And, but they've been those people are at least the. Uh, well, I guess it was the border people that, um, and. Customs that rifled through suitcases looking for things that 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 people were trying to smuggle in, mm-hmm. and all all the smuggling was was um, like drugs and and diamonds and stuff. Some of the smuggling was like they'd go and buy fancy clothes, and then they'd pretend that they had purchased them in New York and um. Oh, and then they have uh, reality shows, too, now. Like, there's one, I think it's called um, Locked Up Abroad. And uh, it's a lot of people who go traveling overseas. And, um, you know, maybe they committed a crime that they weren't aware of while they were there. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't seen seen those. I've seen a lot of, I've seen Locked Up Abroad. But most of the ones that I have seen, it was like, they went over seas and they were going to smuggle dope and they and they don't get out of the country mm. so do we each have uh, a story that we want to share through our um you know interesting topic of the week 
Well, I, I figured that I would hit uh, interesting weather because Colorado's had some really <laughs> fun blizzards. Mm -hmm. And since we're looking at, at getting two feet plus of snow, which would constitute one heck of a blizzard, I figured I could just highlight some of the uh, more interesting blizzards we've had on record. Oh, okay. That sounds good. We've got, again, that, that two feet of snow coming in, which definitely constitutes a blizzard. But as I was going through and looking at just the, the metro area that I live around, mm -hmm. um, I was looking for the most amount of snow that we'd had on record. And that one actually belongs in December, way back in 1913. They got 45.7 inches. Wow. 45.7 oh. inches of snow back in 1913. Um, That's a lot was, of snow. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it was terrible. They ended up um, removing the snow with horse-drawn wagons, which I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that would be my favorite. My my favorite blizzard was actually one that I remember quite fondly. It's it's much more recent. Uh, just 13 years ago, that one happened in March because, of course, we like to give you blizzards over spring break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that one dumped. <laughs> 31.8 inches of snow and at that point I lived uh, kind of really close to DIA so way out to the east mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when when you get out of that neat valley that is Denver it just hammers you so there was 31.8 inches in Denver and I had six and three quarters feet sitting yeah. oh. in, in our in our place and the best part <laughs> about that is we were sitting there just kind of watching things about one o'clock in the morning. It was me and uh, me and my zucchini and a couple other people. We were just kind of up and watching the snow because it got really still, really quiet. And then all of a sudden we heard this horrible ruckus and we stepped outside to see what was going on. And it's these three guys and their really big, huge SUV and they got stuck in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> and so my zucchini and I put on our, you know put on our winter gear and we went outside and went to help them push it and while we are helping these big huge big huge guys with their big huge suv we hear something that sounds like a lawnmower and we turned around to look at it and there is this tiny like 1970s gremlin an actual operational gremlin and it was skipping over the top of the snow and just kept on going <gasps> no problems getting through this six feet of snow. And I looked at the guys and I looked at that gremlin and I looked at them and I'm like, that car was terrible when it was made. What is your excuse? And the one guy just threw his hands up. He's like, I'm leaving the car here. Stomped off. It was so funny. And this oh. thing was like lemon yellow and rusted in spots. And just little gremlin goes oh, slipping on by and I'm like... It's one of those that still works. Oh, yeah. So that, I, that I used okay. to have a gremlin. Yeah, my sister and brother-in-law had one when I'm they were so first scared. dating. I kind of liked my gremlin, although I had problems keeping the gas cap because there was this nice little <laughs> there was this nice little gremlin on it. It was pretty good sized, and then there was this inlaid gremlin on it, and. Every once in a while, people would steal it. <laughs> and they didn't have a lock and gas cap for the, the car. Yeah. And it wasn't that they were messing with the, you know, putting it, stealing gas or, or anything like that. They were just taking my gremlin. Yeah. And at the time, it cost like five bucks to replace it, which doesn't sound like much now. But, but it would have been like $20, $25 nowadays. <laughs> yeah. When you're making... When you're making like two dollars an hour, oh, and, that's, you know, and, and that's considered good. Oh, five dollars is a lot of money. And and on the note of the winter there and driving, I be I don't know about either of you, and and uh, you know I hope this doesn't sound chauvinist, but I become a little old lady when it gets to be <laughs> bad weather. I, I live in an area where there are a lot of, I imagine, soccer moms driving these expensive SUVs. Yes. And, and they somehow think they can compensate their driving talent by the fact that it says Cadillac <laughs> on the vehicle. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. There's a lot of people that do that. And so when it gets bad weather, 
I turn on my hazard lights and I drive in the right lane because I figure if somebody's going to come up behind me and they've got a problem with me driving slow, they can just pass me. Yeah. So, um, um, did no, you... I'm right there with you. We have so yeah. many imports anymore. So many people that have moved here because, hey, marijuana is free. We have had <laughs> such a huge influx of people that just don't know how to drive in, in inclement weather. And especially in Colorado weather where it's so dry and well, half conditions your... get weird. Well, half your but... population is Californians and the other half Texans. Yeah, and they're all stoned. Oh. <laughs> that is terrible. Um, yeah, it, well, I don't know. A lot of people just don't know how to drive in snow. It's like, oh, they they remembered last at the end of the year they were kind of okay, but then summer comes and they don't r- drive in snow. So when the snow comes again in the winter, they can't. They don't know how to drive. I. Well, I firmly believe that there is just a bunch of stupid people out there. Well, I grew up in the state of New York, and I find it to be very interesting how lax some states are with their safety requirements. <laughs> I, 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 I was raised under the understanding that because there was a dark page in New York's past where I think it might have been the 70s, and they had some athletes that were competing in the Olympics who were New York residents mm-hmm. um, that got into a bit of trouble. In fact, I think an athlete might have been guilty of vehicular manslaughter. Oh, no. Yeah. And so as a result of that, New York requires all new uh, all people getting their first driver's license are required to take a four-hour safety course. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. And yeah. So I'm, I was just shocked living in Colorado <laughs> that that wasn't similar there. I mean, especially with so many people coming in from out of state. Right? I I think that would be a wonderful thing. I would be super yeah. happy if that happened. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I was not terribly impressed with their... With their... Um, exam to get a license there Mm -hmm. but when I took the test in Nebraska it was like 20 questions maybe and half of them were picture questions so I mean (laughs) it was like learning how to use the cash register at McDonald's (laughs) oh my goodness it was like what does this sign mean (sighs) You know, and it's like, well, that's a st- – and they they only give you, like, the the color and the design of it. They don't – it doesn't say it on the front. So you have to know a yield so – what a yield sign looks like and what a stop sign looks like. But those are pretty easy. I think so, that most people know that by the time they're 10. Mm-hmm. For my interesting story that I wanted to share – I found this article through FARC.com, F-A-R-K, like kite, and um, this happens to be on a New Zealand website, actually, the article is, Manchester (laughs) couples serve up placenta pizza to celebrate child's birth. So um, I'm just going to read a portion of this article. It says, a British couple who served up a placenta-based pizza and cocktail described the results as lovely. A man, oh. The mad cock and husband, <laughs> Tom, decided the dish was too good to share. Inviting friend Kath, Kat O'Keefe for a quick taste, the Manchester Evening News reported. They had decided to prepare the dish to celebrate the arrival of their second child, Nellie. Now, I'm not going to continue reading this article, but... <laughs> I would hope that if I was going to be invited to dinner, I would know what's in it. Yeah. I think if I got bombed with placenta pizza without being warned first, I would be super sad. Yeah. And I I, I, I don't think that this is not in our customs, and they're just doing something really weird. Now, I think in some really old cultures and some really old religions – that that eating part of the placenta was was a uh, was a religious act. Mm. Uh, but 
I don't think serving it to friends, it was usually the mother or <laughs> and or perhaps the father that that ate and they didn't eat the whole thing. They ate part of it, you know. Um oh. mm. it just <laughs> it just no uh, <laughs> it's just I don't know, it, it, it in in contemporary times it's just kinda not cool. It's sort of I, like in the United States, we don't eat very many of the organ meats. Mm-hmm. You know, they used to eat those things, and they used to need to eat those things. But And the United States, of course, is a spoiled country. We don't have to eat stuff like that. No, so we, we, we prefer to put them in a can and call them spam. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> Gosh, I don't eat that either. Oh, oh. uh-uh, yeah. uh-uh. So, Sue, did you have an interesting story that you'd like to bring up? I was going to talk about Twit, um, because I, I talk about Leo Laporte every once in a while, and and you said that although you know who he is, you haven't watched any of his podcasts, although he calls them netcasts. Uh, all of his podcasts are recorded um, uh, live in, in the studio with um, it, it's television mm-hmm. and and um, I understand <coughs> that about three to four thousand people watch the the television version. There's a whole slew of people that listen to the audio version of it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, there's also the website. It can be streamed live, and it can be streamed live on things like Roku, and uh, I think TiVo has has it. And uh, iTunes, and you know, there's various places where you can go and get the thing. And they talk about they talk about tech. Uh-huh. They talk about computers and and photography and um what's going on in Google and what's going on with uh, the open source things and. Uh, they do a, a daily news show where they kind of do a roundup of what happened in tech that particular day. Mm-hmm. Um, they have about uh, they have about twenty shows, twenty two shows, I think I read. Um, that they do throughout the week. They do these shows either daily or weekly, and it's. It's fairly interesting, it's, and I probably got to listening to it because of my husband. And and their website is twit, T-W-I-T, dot TV. Out in the and that's all the time we have for this episode. We hope you'll join us next time when we bring The Far Away Nearby. The Far Away Nearby is a bi-weekly podcast. You can find our website at tfnpodcast.com, or you can find our fan page on Facebook by searching The Far Away Nearby. We are on Twitter as at TFNDJ. Our email address is tfnpodcast at gmail.com. Leave a message at 206-278-7151. 